Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Starry Teller Forecast for Taurus for August 2013. So, if Taurus is your sun sign or Taurus is your rising sign, then this is for you. If you are interested in having a personal session um, with me, then you can find me at my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and you can also see all of my other books and subliminal audios, other resources to help you radically transform your life. If you're interested in learning astrology, um, either for the purpose of learning more about yourself or reading your friends and family's charts, um, or even doing it professionally, then definitely contact me and let me know because I'm putting together classes for that are time zone compatible for different areas of the world for astrology education. Um, okay, so what is going on for Taurus for August? Where to start? Um, the first thing that is on my mind because it's setting the entire tone for the month of August is the T-square that's going on between Jupiter, Pluto, and Uranus. A T-square is kind of the um, opposing energy to the trine that I was so excited about um, in July. A trine is when uh, is a favorable angle. A grand trine is when three planets come together um, at a favorable angle, a favorable angle. And a T-square is the opposite. You've got two planets that are opposing one another at a 180 degree um, aspect, which Pluto and Jupiter are doing. Then you've got Uranus coming in between here, making like two, like a perpendicular line, two 90 degree angles to Pluto and to Jupiter. 90 degree and 180 degree angles are challenging angles. So rather than looking at this as, oh, August is going to be bad, I find it so often that people will glance through or listen for the tone of a month and say it's either going to be a good month or it's going to be a bad month. And I don't like to do astrology that way because I'm way too optimistic and way too um, inspired to assist in using the challenging energies to make the most awesome lemonade ever. I won't lie that these angles can be a sack of lemons. It's true. These are points of conflict that can be very eruptive. And this may also, hopefully not, but has the energy of reflecting out into the world with a conflictive elemental um, representation from the standpoint of earthquakes or tsunamis or, um, you know, natural disasters because the energy of the elements being out of harmony and being in conflict um, causes inner and outer things to happen in that way. So these energies are happening in your 11th, I mean, in your third house, Jupiter is there in the ninth house, um, where Pluto is, and the twelfth house. So an example of this, try to use the example to look for the theme so that you can apply it to the many different ways this can show up in your life. The third house is very much about communication, it's about transportation, it's about mobility, it's about um, relatives that are not your parents or children. It's how you express yourself. Okay, the ninth house is about the bigger picture, the ideas that the superseding belief systems and thought patterns and um, the connectedness between things. The twelfth house is a very deeply um, unconscious house. It, it, it represents the dream state and the very deep factors affecting life. So let's say you have a relative that just drives you absolutely bonkers and you're having some sort of summer gathering, a barbecue or something, and they say something that you consider to be stupid, and you get really aggravated about it. It feel, it challenges what your belief system is, and it makes you mad. This is going to happen for a lot of Taurus people, this exact scenario or something similar. Something coming to challenge your belief system in a way that brings up things that are way more powerful than the interaction or the person themselves. So the questions to ask are, why is it that you have so much of a charge to something that someone says that you consider ignorant? If, if you didn't have a charge to it, it wouldn't be representing something that's deeply unconscious for you to work out. But the fact that you just can't let it go, or that it makes you so mad, that is part of what this T-square is. There are some internal forces that are being reflected in the external that are not rectified, but you can use 
this opportunity to locate those specific feelings or factors and do something tangible with them. And I can help you do that. That's part of my department. Or there are some other resources that you can use that I highly recommend. Um, the Marriage of Spirit by Leslie Temple Thurston with Brad Laughlin. Fantastic book. Even if you just skip to section two, you can go back and read the other parts at another time. But for the point of working with these energies, these exercises help to take these imbalanced states and to balance and clear them. And that's what they do, and they're very simple and very productive. So if you want a solution to a potential problem or you want to make the most out of this raw fuel to have major inner and, uh, inner and outer authentic movement, then consider using a resource like that or whatever other resources you're drawn to. Some other things going on for Taurus um, is a big focus on home. Part of the Mercury retrograde cycle um, was of, affected, uh, affecting the home sector. Um, but Mercury is direct in the fourth house for August. Mars is getting ready to go there. The sun's going to be there for a short amount of time. Very, very, very common that when Mars moves into the fourth house, as it will soon in August, that people move or they want to move or they feel restless or they start home construction or they feel really antsy to do something radical to their house or they become very focused on buying a home or doing something about home and family, creating a family, um, something like that. If you are feeling wildly ready to create a family, you will have Venus still giving some major fertility in your fifth house. So if you're trying to focus on that, there's some good energy. And when the sun gets to the fifth house, that can be assistive as well. Um, but major focus on home, major focus on family. Many of you will be having family come to visit, or you'll be going to visit family, or you'll be reconnecting with family. In general, August and September are the last open windows of not having personal planets be retrograde or their shadow periods um, until after next July, July 2014. We're going to have retrograde personal planets and their shadow periods from October through July of 2014. It's a really long space of time. So if you are trying to do something new, if you are trying to launch something, let that T-square be the angst, be the fuel that you convert into just blazing through because if you want to initiate something or make things happen, it's going to be much easier for you to do that in August and September than it is when you have this series of um, planets that are going to be going retrograde. So definitely take your window. If you've had things that were on the back burner that you put, uh, were putting off, you know, until the end of the year or you were putting off until, you know, the spring of next year, Consider trying to see what you can do to get those things at least initiated now um, because that's your open window. You're going to have Venus be retrograde at the end of uh, December and into January. Its shadow period is going to be before then. I personally learned it's one of the worst times ever to start a business. I'm an entrepreneur and I've had made, created very successful businesses. My least successful, most expensive business was one that I just had to start in Venus retrograde. This is a long time ago. I did know better at the time. But I have Aries rising and I got fired up and I did it anyway. So if you're wanting to start a business and you've been really, really working on this, see if you can shift your timeline to by September, you know, um, to make that happen. Because you're not going to have the full support of the stars when Mercury then goes retrograde and then Venus does and then Mercury does and then Mars does and then Mercury does. So just be thinking about that, because I know Taurus energy in general is very focused on creating tangible things. I can't see your personal chart, which could offset, other placements could offset some of that, but the Taurus energy itself is very focused on tangible business, financial um, things. So I always say a word to the wise is sufficient. Um, so, also, as I said, I can't see everything that's going on in your personal chart. I'd like very much to, if you would like a personal reading, then contact me um, through Annie at AnnieHelpsYou.com or my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, or the link below this video. And check out all of my resources that I have put together to help you radically improve your life and um, have more fulfillment and happiness and bust out of patterns and blocks and old matrices. matrices. Um, also, if you're interested in learning astrology, definitely contact me to see um, the different ways I'm, I'm offering to do that. And I hope you have a fabulous August.